It's the Scott and Cat Show, and, and we're going to do a Reddit thread here. This is an opportunity for you to have your say because it's another person anonymously who wants to know if they're a jerk. I'm going to tell you the story first, and then let's break it all down. It's a woman whose boyfriend just moved in with her, and he is flipping out now that he lives with her. Here's how she tells the story. When I was 18, my dad gifted me a house with two stories. I'm extremely thankful. We are not upper class, but my dad bought this house for a cheap price a long time ago because it belonged to his grandmother's cousin. I know this was extreme privilege, and I am forever grateful for this. The layout of the building is like an apartment building, but it is a house. So basically, each story has its own separate entry, its own kitchen, and its own bathroom. I live upstairs, and I rent out the downstairs. My boyfriend moved in with me about three months ago. I've not asked him for money yet, neither for utilities or for any rent. In really? quotes. Hmm. The only thing he contributes to is groceries, which we split 50-50. I haven't brought up that I own the building. It's not something I tell many people. Well, last week, the renter from downstairs came up to tell me her freezer had stopped working. I answered the door and my boyfriend could hear us talking. I went downstairs to take a look and we came to the conclusion that she should just go buy one and give me the receipt. I would pay to get her a new freezer. My boyfriend said, what the hell? Why would you just buy the person downstairs a brand new freezer? That's when I told him, because I'm the landlord and the freezer is my responsibility. I would stand for the cost. He asked me if I was serious and then began yelling. Why the hell would you withhold this information from me? He said he couldn't believe he was with someone who's a landlord and that the only thing we people care about is money, not that people have homes that are affordable. So he's already accusing her of being like oh, a gosh. slumlord and right, all sorts right, of stuff. Right. Uh, the downstairs is one kitchen, one bath, and four other rooms. I charge 500 a month in rent. I understand many people have had trouble with landlords, but I try to be a really good one. He demanded that I give him 50% of the money I make from rent since I moved in or else I would be just as bad as he thought. Oh my gosh. I don't like this guy at all. I don't like him either. Dump him. He, uh, he seems to think that because they were living together and she was earning income at that point that he didn't know about, that she should now be obligated to give him. Absolutely not. Part There's of the money. no way in, you know what, I could ever, ever, ever side with this guy. Ever. No, get him out of there then. He already is accusing you of stuff without even knowing the whole story or, or caring about it, it seems. Now, I tend to agree with you, but let me just try and see this from another angle. They care enough about each other that they were ready to cohabitate. They're living together now. Isn't that something that you probably could have brought up at some point in and around the time he was moving in? Hey, by the way, this building that you're moving into, there's a reason you don't have to pay any rent. I own the building. He's taken it from a really nice gesture to, well, now you owe me half of that rent because we're living yeah, together. Whoa. Like that's, that's the over the top part for me because reaction is everything. It'd be one thing to be like, wow, I didn't know that. Can you let's sit down and you could tell me the story about how this came to be and how can I help you out with that? That would be one situation. This is the complete opposite of this. This is someone who is not supportive, already rushing to conclusions and not even giving her a chance to explain herself and wanting half. Everything about this is a red flag for me, so I say ditch him. She ends it with, he has not talked to me since Tuesday. I've been trying to tell him that I'm sorry. He doesn't want to hear it, and he won't answer me at all. So he's accused her of being a slumlord. He's accused her of being dishonest, and he's trying to shake her down for money. Can I go first and say, get rid of this dude? Yeah, you're not Kick the only one. Out. Not the only one. Uh, by text, Harris, boyfriend equals POS. <laughs> uh, Melissa, I'd tell that guy to kick rocks, get out. Uh, Jen, giant walking red flag. He's going to take her money, get him out before he can try claiming her money as common law spouse. Ah, mm -hmm. and I feel like the boyfriend needs to be shown the door. Doesn't contribute, but expects profits. Get out of here. Is there anybody so far that's siding with the guy no. that thinks he had a right to know that? No. Does he have a right to know? If you invite somebody to come and cohabitate with you and you own it, do they right. have a right to Listen know? Listen to the have a right. Like, again, it would have been one thing to be like, wow, I didn't know that. Can you sit like, let's talk about this. Tell me more. That wasn't it.
that was a rush to conclusions. Uh, that was uh, target her for something that she isn't, being a slum lord, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So no, no. Maybe she should have said something to him. That might be a, a, the only argument. But the, his reaction alone to her helping out her someone who's living in one of her spaces is brutal. Four rooms, one bath, one kitchen, five hundred a month in rent. Where I'd like to sign up yeah. for an opportunity. I'd get on the waiting list for that place. That sounds great, doesn't it? Where else do you get $500 a month rent? This is going to be like a far away place, for it sure. Seems far like away from everything. You know pre- what I mean? <laughs> pretty nice place. Hey, you can jump in and weigh in on this or anything else you've heard on the show. Just text us at 1-833-915-SHOW. Kat, we uh, have got a lot of text messages here, and this is following up on something that we're talking about. It's a Reddit thread, and it's a woman asking, am I the jerk? She recently invited her boyfriend to move in. They were sitting there in their upper level apartment. Someone from the downstairs apartment came up and said, hey, my freezer's not working. Boyfriend thought this was all very, very strange. Why would they come tell you that? Turns out the woman actually owns the entire building. It was gifted to her by her parents. He's mad that she didn't tell him that she's the landlord. He has a big problem with landlords in that rent has gone up so much lately. And forgetting the fact that she's not charging him any rent, he wants half the rent money for the last three months since they've moved in together. He wants half of it. I can't believe it. And neither can you guys by text. Steven texts in, uh, are you serious? I pay $2,500 plus utilities. This dude is extremely lucky. I'd shut my mouth and be thankful for her. Shut up. I say for sure, get rid of this dude so he can be paying three grand a month somewhere else. And then uh, won't he kick himself just I'm, for being a jerk? Well, and so he should. Uh, in regards to this poor woman whose supposed boyfriend is wanting half the rent while contributing absolutely nothing... She isn't a slumlord, and he is a giant red flag. It's Mm. outrageous the entitlement some people have while clearly being manipulative and taking advantage of another human being. What does he figure is going to come of this? Does he figure she's going to say, yeah, you know what? You're right. I should have told you that I own part of the building. Here's a big lump sum of cash, and we're going to lower the rent for the people downstairs. That's not going to happen. He's just as likely to get kicked out. Mm -hmm. And then his rent is going from zero to like 2,500 bucks a month. Get him out of there. Kick him out. Bye. Dude, hold it together. Brutal. So I think it's pretty well unanimous. People agree she is not the jerk here. Nobody likes him at all. Nobody likes him at all. And in fact, they say dump him, kick him out immediately. I tend to agree. Great text, everybody. Thanks. You can reach us anytime at 1-833-915-SHOW. It's the Scott and Cat Show. Uh, turn it up. The Beat Brunch with Scott and Cat on Kitchener's number one hit music station. Yeah, you know what we is. 91.5 The Beat. Hey there. It's the Scott and Cat Show. Cat, I've come across a great post and I want to share it with you and everybody listening right now. Things that you might hear in the bedroom that you might also hear while decorating the Christmas tree. Ready? <laughs> uh Things that you might do that. Say that again. Things you might hear in the bedroom. Uh huh. That you might also hear uh, while decorating the Christmas uh, tree. Oh, okay, great. It's beautiful. I wish we could keep it up all year long. Ah. Uh. Please be gentle. Those are antiques. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> mood killer. That does not go there. Do I have to do it myself? <laughs> Why is it leaning so far to the left? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> We're going to need to put something under the skirt to keep the floor from getting wet. Okay. Yep. 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 <laughs> I got a couple. Should we put it by the couch or what? where we always do? <laughs> <laughs> How about... Look at that hang. Ah. The, the ornaments, obviously. I think it needs a little fluffing. <laughs> that pricked me. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a little distracted by the text messages coming in. People are already on top of that. one uh, 915 show if you would like to add to this conversation. It's shinier than I thought it would be. <laughs> Ha ha ha!
kind of hurts my eyes. <laughs> um, not all of them can be read here on the radio. No, not no, all of them can be no, read on the radio. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> I Where's can't the do big... that one. You guys got to stop doing that. I can't do that one. I can't do that one. No. Where are the big balls from last year? Yes. I forgot how big it is. These are things that you might hear in the bedroom and also while decorating the Christmas tree. How about this one? Hot cocoa would be nice right now. Oh, okay. Sure. Not another Star Wars thing. (laughs) (laughs) Another one? (laughs) Maybe it would help if you stood on a stool. (laughs) Make sure you get some of those on the back. <laughs> that's good. That's good. The, uh, some good Don't texture. Don't forget about the backside. <laughs> good texture. Uh, needs some trimming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we uh. Just the way I like it, my angel on top. <laughs> Okay. Hold it like that just a little bit longer. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Uh, Okay, so we got it together. 1-833-915-SHOW if you'd like to contribute to this conversation. These are things that you might hear in the bedroom or while decorating the Christmas tree. Let us know. We'll have more of these coming up on the Scott and Cat Show. Catching you up on everything that happened this week. Turn it up. Turn me up. The Beat Brunch with Scott and Cat on Kitchener's number one hit music station, 91.5 The Beat. It's the Scott and Cat Show. If you're just throwing the radio on, just for fun, doing something a little bit different, it's based on a thread online. Things you might hear in the bedroom that you might also hear while putting up the Christmas tree. <laughs> I'm going to start off with a great text that came in from Deanna. All I can say is you guys start my day with tears. I laugh so much. I seriously need to redo my makeup. Don't stop. And another one for the tree. Let's leave the lights on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for that text message. That's sweet. I hope we get this done faster than we did last year. <laughs> <laughs> last year. Oh, no. Let's anchor it so the cat doesn't knock it over. Oh, no. Can you hold it while I push it in? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. It's not as big as the last one I had. (laughs) The balls don't go there. (laughs) Ow, it poked me. Don't break it. Wow, that's crooked. Where should I put the pickle? (laughs) It's only been up for a few minutes and it's already leaking. (laughs) It's so sticky. Oh, my hair got cut. (laughs) (laughs) The text messages that have come in, even the ones we can't read, dynamite. Thank you, everybody. Very good. You can reach us anytime at 1-833. You crooked people, you. (laughs) You freaks. I kind of want to go over and watch some of these people decorate their tree. (laughs) Me too. 1-833-915-SHOW to reach us anytime. We'll be right back. (laughs) I can't. I can't. Um, We're still getting text messages in, so we're going to read just a couple more. Simple, simple question. What's something... You might hear in the bedroom that you would also hear while decorating your Christmas tree. (laughs) We had some good ones. Do you want to hear a few new ones? Give me a few more. Spread them out more. (laughs) Why is it so droopy? (laughs) Is it supposed to smell like that? (laughs) That's a big gap, honey. (laughs) 
It went up quick when we worked together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Two hands are better than one. <laughs> There's so many great ones here. Hopefully you got to hear the ones earlier. Uh, oh, my goodness. That's great. It's the Scott and Cat Show. If any more come in. We'll try and share them. If not, we're going to move on because we've got a lot of other stuff to do. But this was a lot of fun. So thank you to everybody who took the time to send in a text message. We certainly appreciate it. Kat, this is a uh, a strange crime. But as I'm sure you know, there's there's a lot of crime happening right now. Everybody's trying to figure out a way to get a little bit of extra dough. Three men in Oklahoma have been arrested for stealing something that I've never heard stolen before. Dr. Pepper. I assume a lot of it or like just a bottle. Like what are we talking about here? $100,000 worth of Dr. Pepper. This is how not all criminals are created equally. They're not all a big mastermind with an empire and great ways to get around the law. Some of them are real dummies. So here you go. They would steal pallets of the syrup that they used to make Dr. Pepper from the Dr. Pepper warehouse. It comes in five-gallon bags within boxes, kind of like your wine. Well, the boxes... <laughs> <laughs> The boxes then get sold to places like gas stations and variety stores. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's how they make like their big gulp drinks and their Slurpees and stuff like that. Got it, yeah. Well, this was an inside job. The thieves had the same plan, except they would break into Dr. Pepper and steal the pallets of syrup and sell it to the gas stations for less than the original price and then just pocket the money. Okay, a little under the table shadiness happening here. I see it. I get it. But not even all pop. Just Dr. Pepper. Just, that was it. That's the only operation they were running. Now, two of the guys used to work at Dr. Pepper, and one admitted he started stealing the pallets while he was still working there. He stole 10 pallets worth $40,000 while he was still employed with the company. He's been stealing two to three pallets a week since August. It's $100,000 worth of Knock off Dr. Pepper. <laughs> did Counterfeit, they, if you will. Did they notice that the inventory was, like, missing? They must have been on to it. Companies like that probably keep really good track of their stock. Or do they? I guess not. Nobody noticed that $100,000 worth of syrup was just gone. Now, the third guy, he worked at the gas station. Apparently, he knew he was getting stolen syrup. And that's why it was so cheap. It's Ooh. not clear how they got caught, but all three men are now facing very serious charges. Yeah. They'll go to jail for years. How do you explain that in jail when inevitably someone says, what are you in for? <laughs> well, <laughs> you stole a bunch of Dr. Pepper, Dr. actually. Dr. Pepper. Oh, you killed a doctor? No, I stole Dr. Pepper, the drink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to, if, if you could get all of them and go to a gas station and say, hey, you usually pay 100 bucks. I'm going to sell it to you for 50 and this is your Slurpee machine or your Big Gulp fountain drinks all taken care of. I can see that working. But it's just one of the five flavors they have. Who would take that <laughs> offer? <laughs> you could always tell the stores that are taking it because everything's just Dr. Pepper. <laughs> everything's overwritten. No barks here. Just Dr. Pepper. <laughs> no, you can't get Pepsi. It's Dr. Pepper. <laughs> what slushy flavor do you want? Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper, or Dr. Pepper? I mean, we all like a Dr. Pepper from time to time, but holy cow, this is ridiculous. <laughs> it's $100,000 <laughs> worth. There's far easier ways to make money. Yeah, well. Uh, like a job. Like a job. Like That's a, a job. great one. I yeah. Don't know. Uh, they're going to jail. It's the Scott and Cat Show, and, and yesterday a whole bunch of year-end Auditor General reports came out. And, and it, it, throughout your travels, you'll probably hear about the report about health care, and you'll probably hear the report about moving the Science Center to Ontario Place. And I'm actually fixated on a different one of the Auditor General reports, because this is one that affects all of us. The Acting Auditor General says Ontario's removal of the three-point turn parallel parking and other requirements from the G-Class driving test last year was done without a full review and may have impacted road safety. The acting auditor general says in his annual report, certain maneuvers were removed from examinations in an effort to clear up the backlog of road tests that was caused by COVID closures. Test requirements were reduced last January without formal approval from the cabinet and the driver examinations no longer require a roadside stop or included a residential section. They also concluded the ministry had limited oversight of driving schools and instructors, which meant it may not have been aware of some questionable training or business practices at the schools that could have undermined driving tests across the province. 
So let's go back almost exactly one year. We were talking about it. Kat, I think I would have said to you, oh, the government wants to get rid of the three-point turn and parallel parking tests mm-hmm. from the G-test. I think we said this was a bad idea. Yes, now, I, we definitely did. Now, a year later, the Auditor General saying, yeah, that was a bad idea. Yes. We shouldn't have done that. I would love to know. I want to know all the numbers. I'd like to know if that makes a difference in how people are driving now. Because I feel like there's a lot of skilled people are lacking, even as a driver just driving down the road. I could see it, and I'm sure all of you can too. Well, if you think about it, anybody who got their full G license, and it's a full G, no going back to retest them. It's not like we'll pick it up on the next one. They're done. Which is another argument that we could have, whether or not we need that. But anyway, we'll save that for another time. I'm not opposed to a driver's test every 10 years. Nor am I. I think it would make things a lot better. But anyway, now anybody who got their full G in the last year is cruising around completely untested on their ability to parallel park, make a three-point turn, and all those other things that you may have to do at any given time when you're driving. Yeah, absolutely. This is a problem. I, it's, a, it's a big problem. These are people driving around in very, very large weapons, essentially, that could be doing any number of things in them. I mean, again, I, I you could just see it. You could just see it on, on the road. I feel like some people shouldn't be driving or clearly are lacking the skill. And there's a lot of other factors, but this is a problem. Yeah. I, uh, what, what is the residential sections? Forgive me. I didn't go through graduated licensing. I got in right before we brought in this new system. I had my... It's not so new anymore, Scott. I had my full... <laughs> G- I guess I shouldn't say new anymore, right? That just made me sound old. Okay, so I got my full license about 60 days after I got my beginners. Right. And then the next year they brought in graduated licensing and I got in before that. Maybe I should be retested. Maybe everybody should be retested. Now that we've got a whole year's worth of new drivers on the road that haven't been fully tested and the AG says this is a problem, what would you think of a massive Ontario-wide retest? You got one year. We're going to go alphabetically. January A to C goes. You got to go and get retested. Ten minutes on the road just to prove you know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I think the government would like that if we had to pay for it. But that's the thing is, like, this should almost cost us zero dollars. We shouldn't have to pay out of our own pocket for it, though. Well, we've already paid for it. You know what? How how about we work the opposite way? Why don't we? Who are What are people? Money motivated. You go and do this. Guess what? You get 20% off your insurance. Oh, you're making a lot of sense here now. Right? Hang on, hang on. You, you That's do this a good idea. And you pass, your car insurance goes down. I wonder how many people would voluntarily take a road test for a shot at 20% off their I'm insurance. I'm raising my hand. I would do it. I got to think that's at least four or $500 in savings for the average driver. I would do that. Do it. Yes. Why don't we do things like that? Motivate well, people to do it. We might have to do a general retest anyway, because, I mean, anybody who got their license since last January is not on the same level as the rest of us. <laughs> people who are driving right now listening to us are like, oh, great, guys. Thanks. <laughs> I feel super safe right now. You might want to slow down and move over to the yeah. right lane. Yeah. The Ooh. lane you're supposed to be driving Careful in. Careful out there. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the solution here is, but it's been flagged by the Auditor General, so we figured we'd let you know. There's a lot of drivers out there who haven't been tested at the same level that others have, and it's presenting a bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. Love to see the stats from the last year and see if there was an increase in crashes or an increase in, like, the tickets that they gave out or something like that. I'm sure it'll all come out in the weeks to come, but either way, just be safe out there because the people beside you are bad drivers. Eyes on the roads. Eyes on the road. That one beside you right there. See that one? That one? Bad Bad bad, bad. driver. You stay Stay away away. from that one. Get away. Don't make eye contact. What are you doing? Stop. (laughs) Don't make eye contact at all. Yeah, we're talking about uh, an Auditor General report, part of the annual year-end package that came out yesterday. And one of the things the Auditor General found is that the removal of the three-point turn, parallel parking, and several other requirements from the G-Class driving test was done without a full review, and it may have impacted road safety. If you don't recall, because there was such a backlog because they shut the drive test centers down for so long, last year to get everything caught up, they said, ah, you know what, don't even bother. Don't test people on three-point turns. Don't test them on parallel parking. Make it like a factory line. In and out, give them their license, and let them be on their way. What could go wrong? Well, now the AG is saying, that might not have been a good idea. One thing I did not know until now is that the producer of the Scott and Cat show, Octavia also slid in without getting all this stuff done. You didn't do the test with the parallel parking and stuff? Nope, because my license expired over COVID. I was on a G2, so I had to go, and by then they had dropped all of that. 
So how long was the test? What did it take? Like 15 minutes? Pretty much. Really? Yeah, it was so short. <laughs> and then they just afterwards, oh, here's your G. You never have to get tested again. Yep. D- did you practice any of those things that you didn't actually do on the test? Like, do you think that you would be good at doing any of those things? Like three-point turns and parallel three parking? Three-point turns is like my thing that I just do all the time. <laughs> parallel parking, never. I never do it. I will avoid doing it. Hate it. What if you're ever in a situation where you have to do it, though? Could you if you needed to in a pinch? It would like it would take a comically long time for me oh to do it. Oh my god, that's <laughs> scary. You know what though? It does take a comically long time for people to do it. It does. Haven't you noticed? Like especially in the downtown areas, right? That's where you notice how bad people are yeah. at parallel parking. Uh-huh. That's the spot. 15 minute road test. Bam, you paid your money. You've got your license for life. Yep. Wow. wow. Okay, we've got a lot of text on this. Like Kat said, let's try and get to some of these now. Guys, my daughter got her G. She did have to parallel park for her G1, but it took her three times. She's an aggressive driver that makes me nervous. I think that the last five years, these folks should be retested. If you got your license in the last five years, a mandatory retest. Okay, there's an idea. We were talking about how we go through, do this. I think there are people who even in the last five years didn't get their full G should be tested too. Probably. I drive a tractor trailer. I go about 200,000 kilometers a year. Insurance companies recognize that I have a queen and I drive quite a bit more than the average person. I can't even get insurance with all considered. Hmm. Regarding the retesting, I'd be 100% on board every five years. I want to retest. A lot of people on the road seem to need it. Okay, great one. Great text. Uh, I wonder if it's generational too, because most of the new generation thinks it's too hard for them. So they just want everything given to them. Whoa! Whoa. That's why they took the stuff off the driver's test, because it was too hard. Octavia, what's your problem? Those are some fighting words. <laughs> I'm what feeling I, attacked. Are you, because what I will say to that is, I don't know if it's always... New, I know we always like to intend to focus on the new drivers being the problem, but I've seen my fair share of older drivers having a lot of problems, too. This is true. This is true. How often do you hear those stories? I mean, they're every day. We don't even do them every day anymore on the show. People who mistook the brake for the gas and drove front into the LCBO and it, stupid stuff like that. It happens that. all the time. It happens all the time. Guys, my nephew went for his G test in the summer. He still had to do a three-point turn and parallel park, but that was here in northern Ontario. Okay, thanks for listening up north. We appreciate it. Guys, the newer generations of drivers spend too much time on cameras instead of using their mirrors right, like the old days. Right. The screens... I, I don't yeah. think that's a problem. Technology shouldn't put us further behind. It's there to help. And I, if it helps, it helps. I think it's also helpful to do it, though, because we still have blind spots with cameras. So I always like to give a quick look, at least just a quick look, to make sure that it's picking up everything it should. And sometimes things seem like they're farther away than they are. That's the other tricky thing, especially in parking lots and stuff. Like, I'm always afraid when it's very busy wherever I am that I'm going to run someone over. To me, it's too much like playing a video game, and I try and finesse it to be perfect. If I'm using the screen and it's got those little lines on it to guide me, if I don't back in perfectly, I'm starting the whole thing over again. I love the backup cam. It's, it's kind of like playing a video game. Uh, Alan here says, yeah, I had to teach my daughter how to do a three-point turn, parallel park, and back into a parking space. I taught her, and she's doing very, very well with all. Well, sometimes you have to put things into your own hands. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, here's somebody who thinks newcomers to the country shouldn't be automatically handed a license. He says, I was at the MTO with my daughter. I heard a worker tell a man who did not speak very good English that it's been dri- he's been driving in his country for three years, so he should be entitled to a license here. Again, I think we could get around this by just testing everybody. Just test. If you do the minimum and you pass the test here, then you're good. If you had a full license in another country... I don't know. I assume other countries know what they're doing, but I have no idea. Regardless, we got to move on, but we really appreciate these texts, everybody. If you want to weigh in on this or anything else, 1-833-915-SHOW. I know. I know. You thought this couldn't happen in real life. You thought this only happened in the movies, like Christmas Vacation. Everybody remembers the moment. Squirrel gets loose in the house because, Cat, the squirrel entered the home in the Christmas tree. I remember this. Yes, indeed. Could that actually happen in real life, do you think? Yes. 
I do think. Of course it can. Yeah, absolutely. People are just cutting things down willy-nilly. Could be any number of creatures in that thing. Hauling it back to your house, scaring the bejesus out of it. Texas woman is telling the story of how she found a possum hiding in the branches of her Christmas tree. It was in her house. Shares the video on TikTok. It's hiding in an abandoned tree. Sorry, in adorned tree. The woman says in the video, she doesn't know how this animal got into her house, so it must have come in on the Christmas tree that they hauled in from outside. She heard noises after arriving home from work. She thought it was her cat or dog. She went up close to investigate and then saw, and I quote, a long rat looking tail sticking out of the tree. (laughs) That is not a decoration. What do you do? Freak out, scream. But you can't just leave a possum in your house. What are no, you going to do? No, of course do? not. Do you, do you call somebody? Do you try and yeah. get it out yourself? Uh, call the cops? I don't know. What do you do? Yeah. She went to the kitchen and got herself a set of rubber gloves. Okay. Probably smart to start. She decided she was going to pull the animal from the oh, tree. That's a dangerous game. But it was clinging tightly to the branch. Yeah. Eventually, she says... She was able to get its hands or paws, whatever. What is a possum? A paw? A paw, I assume, yeah. A possum, yeah. Able to get the paws to relinquish its grip on one of the branches. It dropped out of the tree and bam, there it is looking right at her. Uh, it ran under the couch. No. Get out of there. That's when the woman, and I'll use her words here, was able to tackle him like an NFL football player. She tackled the, she possum, tackled the possum in her... It was oh going under gosh. the couch, so she dove right onto it. Caught the possum. So now she's gloved up and holding a possum in her living room. Is anyone around to open the door? They open the door! Nobody was home. No. Nobody was home. No, that's so awful. So she had to carry this possum outside. She says it was not mean. It was not aggressive during the, ca- the encounter, but it was a little skittish. She let it go. Everything is fine. I'm wondering how often this happens to people. Yeah. How often do you bring a tree into your, usually once a year, someone will bring a tree into their living room. Did you check it to see if there was animals inside first? Yeah. And one assumes that, I mean, that if it's already kind of wrapped up and stuff, that there won't be anything in it. But that's not necessarily the case either. Could be anything, right? It could be a possum, a squirrel, a cookie making elf. Who knows? Bunch of ants. Like what's worse? A bunch of bugs, like a bug infested tree. And you didn't realize until you unwrapped it all and the bugs are all over the place. Right. Or a possum. Like, what would you rather? Uh, Neither, personally, but I'm starting to understand why people are sticking their Christmas tree in the tub and hosing it off before they put it up in the living room. I thought that was stupid at first, and then I read this. Now I know why. Reminder again of why I have a fake tree. I should put a fake possum inside it next time. (laughs) (laughs) Replace the pickle. Freak people out. With a possum. (laughs) Great idea. Uh, Everybody is fine. The possum is fine. Everybody is going to be good. It's just a reminder. You might want to shake it out a little bit before you bring it in the house. All right, let's do a deep dive into this one here, Kat. I'm going to tell you the story of Layla Kelly. Layla is an OnlyFans star, but that part of the story doesn't come in until just a little bit later on. Layla is now telling the story of when she answered her door and saw saw two cops standing right there. She says she kind of freaked out. The cops said, we're here to have a talk with you. She says, I instantly thought, oh my God, somebody died. She's from New Zealand, and she says... My- <laughs> She's like me. I've been automatically, worst case scenario, what happened? <laughs> she says, my heart dropped, and I started panicking. I thought for sure something absolutely horrible had happened. That's when the cops said, it has nothing to do with anyone dying. We're here to talk to you about one of your videos that has recently gone viral on social media and on OnlyFans. The cops flagged one of her clips where she and a friend filmed themselves taking off their underwear and leaving them in different parts of Bunnings Hardware Store as, and I quote, a nice surprise for the dads and the hardworking trades and construction workers. People like the strangest thing on OnlyFans. The strangest things. They do. The video did go viral. She said it was simply meant to be a funny joke. Ha ha, we left some panties around for the dads and contractors. She assured the cops 
She didn't actually leave any pairs of underwear in the store. She says, we filmed a bunch of different videos there. No staff told us anything, except when we took our shoes off at one point. Well, you can take your underwear off, but not your shoes in a hardware yeah, store. They Is were that okay right? with all the endings that you spread around. But they're like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We draw the line at shoes, lady. That's offensive. Well, now apparently the hardware store has got an issue with it that they were featured in her little adult video here. And, and she's been served with a trespass notice and uh. hit with a fine of $6,000 if she visits another Bunnings store location in the next two years. <laughs> they want to stay family friendly, do they? I guess so. I, it sounds like she no. wanted to do something nice for the tradespeople. That's beautiful. Listen, in all fairness, though, you got to start. You've got to start punishing in a way. That's not too bad of a punishment, by the way. Stay out of the hardware store. Fine. You can do that. You can manage that, and you probably deserve it, even if you were pretending to leave them around or not. doesn't matter. But at a certain point, there's a lot of people doing stuff in public places or at other people's properties or businesses just to get a viral moment. Just to get a viral moment, whether that is for OnlyFans or whether we're just talking about for TikTok's sake. And at a certain point, we have to start being like, can you stop? <laughs> like, it's too much. We get it. For you your, need content. Like, I don't know how we many, understand. Yeah, and I don't know how many views this is going to get. In some cases, it's just 14. Like, is this worth it to you? Is it worth it to you to do this? I don't know. I mean, you tell me. But uh, in some cases, it's got to be said. Very unfortunate if she happens to need a... A hammer or a screwdriver of some sort, because now how will she ever procure it? <laughs> she should she should have done that at Walmart, because nobody would have said anything. Cared. It would have been like another day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> underwear I've, used. Oh, okay, just toss that aside. I haven't been on OnlyFans, but I'm strongly suspecting there's probably a whole Walmart section of people doing stupid stuff in there. Sure, cat's right. Everybody, please keep your clothes on in public. We all have to maintain just an ounce of decorum here. We can't have people ripping their underwear off in the middle of hardware stores <laughs> and walking around in just a pair of shoes. Yes. So that's the deal. Banned for two years. And that's likely what would happen to you if you decide to film such a beautiful just, scene. Just film it in your home. <laughs> just totally film. fine to film it in your home. It's fine. You can, you, like, there's other things you can do. You can no. go on Amazon and get a green screen. You can put yourself yes, anywhere in the world. You can go anywhere. You can put it on the top of Buckingham Palace. I mean, really, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> God bless technology in the adult <laughs> industry. It's great. Kat, it's a dilemma that we Canadians have had to deal with all of our lives. We love our phone, but it gets so cold that you need to have gloves on from time to time, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, what do we do here? We've all seen those gloves that have got the little touch thingy there on the, yes. on the thumb. <laughs> this sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. I, I find most of the time it doesn't it, work. Yeah, yeah. Depending on where you buy it, I feel like, because I'll probably buy it from cheap places. I'd like to play for you a short news report that's actually going viral from the BBC, where they claim that the South Koreans have figured it out. Listen to this. One of the coldest winters on record. There's snow everywhere, and everyone is getting really annoyed that they can't use their smartphones while they're wearing gloves. Now, the Koreans, lots of people, decided to use sausages as meat styluses for their phones. And you know what? It actually works. Please excuse typos. I'm writing with a... Sausage. <laughs> it sounds like a dirty pickup line. Right, right. Hey, you up? <laughs> I'm typing with a dirty sausage right now. <laughs> <laughs> right now I'm using my meat stylus. Yeah. <laughs> mm, that's a weird one. Um, I'm going to, and, and I don't want to crap all over the mainstream media. Far be it for me to disagree with the folks at the BBC. I just don't personally see many South Koreans walking around with a sausage in their pocket in case they happen to have to text and don't want to take their glove off. <laughs> you, well, you could just probably get them anywhere on the street. Imagine just selling those off. Are you going to eat it? Are you going to use it? What are you doing with it? Well, I didn't play the whole report. Believe it or not, they went on for four and a half minutes about this. One other thing that does work apparently though, Kat, not just a sausage. Maybe this is more, maybe you don't want to have a sausage in your pocket. I, I understand. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> A pickle also works. <laughs> a pickle? Yes. Okay. It ha I read the explanation. It has to do with electricity. Humans, sausages, and pickles store an electrical charge and conduct it. So when we touch our phone screen, our stored charge connects with the grid inside. Now, that doesn't happen with items that don't transfer electricity. That's why you can't use like a 
a wooden spoon or a glove or something. It interferes. Right. But if you're willing to pull out a sausage and tap, tap, <laughs> tappy on your phone, you can send anybody anything you it's want. It's a weird thing to, you know, whatever works for you. Just don't hand me your phone to anybody and wash that thing. It's Often. Salmonella coming soon. Oh. <laughs> coming in hot. Oh. I typed with a sausage. I don't know how I got <laughs> sick. Should you have to inform someone? By the way, I typed this with my sausage. Yeah, you know those automatic like messages that end up on the bottom? Like, I'm driving. Leave me alone. It's like <laughs> I'm typing with my sausage. I had focus turned right off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for what it's worth, the BBC says the Koreans are carrying around sausages to be able to message in cold weather. I can just picture most Koreans being like, hang on a second. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Don't you implicate me in this. I'm not doing that. Like three of us, but you make it seem like the whole place is? Come on. <laughs> oh, the BBC. Lovely. Good for them. It's the Scott and Cat Show. <laughs> No matter what your holiday looks like, one thing remains the same. We are Kitchener's number one hit music station. Happy holidays from the entire 91.5 The Beat family. Hey, let's go. The Beat Brunch with Scott and Kat. Number one. On Kitchener's number one hit music station. 91.5 The Beat. Kat, you ever uh, walked into a, a room or a building and it's just got a smell that takes you back maybe to when you were younger or a great memory in your life. Sure. Smells are amazing. For a lot of people, it could be cookies, a wood fireplace, pine needles, uh, cinnamon, gingerbread. There's all Baking kinds of them, right? and all kinds of things. Sure thing, yeah. yes. You know who recognizes that? And you know who else never misses an opportunity to get some free promo is the fine folks over at Miller High Life. Oh, They've got, what do they, they have to do with this? <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me about a candle. This is ridiculous. I, I did not know that they're celebrating their 120th anniversary, and they're selling a Mary High Light, which is a two-and-a-half-foot light-up neon Christmas tree. It's basically a 3D bar sign disguised as a Christmas tree for your home. But here's the kicker. It's been infused Oh, with, with the smell, the smell, let me use the, the words they use. Infused with the scent of sweet tobacco. Allowing the odor of cigarettes to waft through your home or maybe even a pipe. In other words, they want your home with this sign in it to smell like a dive bar. Why would we want that, though? I know they do. That's all good for them. I personally... Anything else but that is, is probably okay. I like, uh, first off, the smell of cigarettes indoors. That that one's a weird one for me. But the smell of a dive bar. I mean, yeah, I've walked into some good dive bars and thought, I'm going to like it here. They want to recreate that. So if it brings back memories for you, then this is the, is it a Christmas tree or is it a bar sign? It's really hard to tell. Two and a half feet. It's 3D. And it looks like a tree, but it's got the Miller High Life logo on it. It Very just good. happens to make your house stink. Okay, great. Again, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe might remind me of my grandfather's house. <laughs> well, that's the thing is it might bring up memories for you, but are they good memories? <laughs> it all depends, right? If that sounds like a must-have decoration for you, you can grab one for just $120 on Miller's online store. $120? Yeah. Is that what you said? $120. Bucks oh, no. For a two and a half foot Christmas tree. Well, I don't know. They're charging 100 for the six-footers, so this kind of makes sense. Uh, they say they're available now, and if you order one, they promise they will get it to you before Christmas. There's a lot of fun stuff on that store. I've, I've picked up a few swag and merch items sure. over the years. Right. Miller cool. High Life's fine beer. Uh, okay, I'll trust your word on that. <laughs> this tree is kind of stupid, but I like it. It's the Scott and Cat Show. Kitchener's number one hit music station, 91.5 The Beat.